Hi and welcome back to Dev Explaining channel. Today I have another security topic for you, rather urgent one. This is about uh, Spring for Shell exploit. So in this video I will briefly explain what it is. Uh, I will try to shortly explain what, what's the impact and in which case you would be vulnerable. And then finally I will tell you some mitigations and fixes that are available today. Some ideas how you can kind of take these onwards. So let's get started. What's the exploit? Well, this one goes through Spring Framework. So uh, if you have Spring Framework, to be more specific, the web MVC part included, uh, you should be paying some attention here. Uh, it requires Java, obviously. So if you're not running Java, no worries. Uh, then you wouldn't have Spring Framework probably either. So Java, Java version 9 is now kind of assumed to be the first one. And from there onwards, so, so Java 9, Java 11, Java 17 are assumed to be vulnerable. Uh, Spring Framework, any versions that are currently, when, when I'm doing this video, any version might be vulnerable, unless it's very, very outdated and old, uh, cannot say about those. And then finally, uh, we have one, one more component. So you need to package a war file, deploy it to a Tomcat web server. Uh, other web servers might trigger this one as well, but Tomcat has been used in the proof of concepts. It's what I tested this against as well. Okay, now uh, all of these uh, need to take place before you are vulnerable, so therefore no need to panic immediately. Just uh, follow up on this, kind of keep, it, keep an eye on this. And even if you have all those preconditions in place, uh, there's still one more. So you need to have a REST API that will take some payload uh, in, in the data and uh, it, will, it will put them to a POJO. So if there's a plain old Java object um, holding the content, then that is exactly the combination that will make you vulnerable. Now, uh, word of warning. When a new exploit that, that is this popular comes around, it means that people will be trying to kind of uh, find new ways to exploit it, and they will find. So expect that within few next weeks, people will kind of find uh, uh, clever ways to circumvent the fixes that are being made and, and they will be able to attack from another angle as well. So some of what I mentioned might be kind of broken by that, but at least that's uh, up to now. It's what we know. So that's the combination. How does the exploit look like? Let's uh, dive into a little bit of code. Might be interesting to share that for you. So uh, immediately when this exploit became well known, uh, a lot of Git repositories appeared where they are showing this uh, kind of proof of concept. Those repositories might be immediately then used uh, for attack. So unfortunately, it doesn't take much talent. So any, anybody who knows their Java or Python is able to quite easily exploit this and weaponize it and, and create kind of... Uh, huge uh, attacks, uh, attacking a host of IP addresses. So that's the scenario, and that is happening right now. But I wanted to show you kind of minimal view of how the attack looks like, so you will recognize it. So here is a Python exploit, and what they are doing is, this is two, sta two, two stages. So stage one, uh, in, in the data part, they will inject uh, executable code. And this one is not yet the kind of uh, end, end attack. So this one just tries to exploit a hole in Spring so that they are able to create a JSP file using a little bit of Java code. If they manage to create that new JSP in your web, web folder, um, they will then use that JSP here. Can be named anything, but they will try to use it and they will be able to run remote shell commands. As you know, what can you do if you have remote shell? Pretty much anything within the limits of the process that's running the web server. So if you're a clever coder, uh, your web server is running under limited permissions, and then it has limited access to the machine and surroundings. But uh, I know that I've seen a lot of software being run with root access because hey, it's easy. It can do anything, so there's nothing on your way. In that case, there's nothing uh, on the way of attacker either. So if they have root access, it's going to be a very bad day for you. So remote shell execution, that's how it happens. And uh, the rest depends on how 
kind of best practices you have followed when you deployed the application. And if there is a wide permissions, then what it can and will do, it will try to steal information. So it will be scanning the disk to find any uh, SSH keys, any passwords, user accounts, any server IP address names, any personally identifiable information, or even everything. So it will try to grab those and send to a remote site uh, using the shell access. By the way, if you monitor outgoing network traffic, you will catch these patterns because your normal web server is unlikely, unlikely to start curling uh, some IP addresses and pushing some payloads or, or huge amounts of data. Another thing it will try to do is scan the network from within if it can, and it will try to figure out if there's more, more vulnerable hosts for this one or for something else, like Log4Shell. So if it's able to find uh, from the network other places, it will launch new attacks. And these might be servers that are not uh, visible in the internet. So it will attack from within. And finally, it might be able to spread itself like a virus there. Uh, finally, uh, what we already know from Log4Shell, um, in a lot of cases when somebody exploited this, they either uh, encrypted the machine and were requesting to, to pay some Bitcoin to be able to uh, extract them, or they just outright wipe, nuke your hard drive entirely, uh, just destroy the machine. So expect all or some of these to happen. Uh, they typically combine these, so first they steal stuff, then they destroy all the forensics. So that might, that might be your first kind of worst case scenario. So how do we avoid that? I have some ideas. Uh, on March 13th, uh, uh, SpringCloud.io published a little bit of insight. Expect to see more in the upcoming days, early days still. But uh, I wanted to show this one because there is some mitigation ideas already. So follow up on things like this. I will drop the link in the um, description section of the video. By the way, if you like the video, remember those buttons and drop any comments in the feedback section as well. So um, how do you fix this vulnerability? Well, there is a few steps here that you can take, uh, but I really like the approach because this, uh, this will fix all of your application. So uh, you would create a filter, web filter or controller advice in spring terms and make sure it gets uh, run before anything else. And then, <clears throat> then you would be kind of uh, checking for, you could, you could also uh, check if there is any, any kind of patterns of this taking place. But uh, the most important thing is to kind of set some disallowed fields. Um, this will protect you from the attack, at least from, from the attacks we currently know. Remember, it will mutate within the upcoming weeks. Okay, um, no official security patch or latest version has been released yet, but there will be once. So all the no currently known Spring Framework versions are vulnerable. So unfortunately, that kind of fix requires you to be able to adjust the code and rebuild it and redeploy. And in some cases, that's not available for you. So how could you protect yourself from this one in that case? Well. I would say uh, a clever firewall that's able to, uh, well, stop outgoing calls, always a good practice, uh, but also scan incoming calls. So a good web application firewall might be able to grab the incoming data, scan for those class patterns, and then just filter out those requests or, or modify them so that they, they are re rendered kind of harmless. So that would be one very good option. Uh, second one is mostly then to just uh, make a list of these. So find all these vulnerable systems and, and uh, follow on the situation. You started that path today by watching this video, uh, perhaps following the links in the description section, but follow up on Spring Framework if you, if you even uh, have a slight, slightest idea that this might be uh, happening for you if, if you might have a vulnerable system. Now, as far as we know, the Spring Boot applications, package jars are not vulnerable. However, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit difficult to generate JSPs in those. However, as I mentioned, expect the attack to mutate. 
So I will definitely be tracking this for a few upcoming weeks to see where it goes, what will happen. Same thing as with lock 4 shell there will be a kind of series of these dance steps, so people will try to fix and protect, other people will try to find new angles and uh, either publish them or don't publish them, but uh, there will also be people who are monitoring the patterns uh, of attack like I typically like to do. I have some systems where I can see when people are trying to attack and then I can learn uh, what kind of can openers are being used. Okay, I try to keep this kind of video short, just a heads up for you. So thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.